How well do you do sticking to new habits? Most people do pretty well when they're feeling motivated, but once that initial excitement wears off, they tend to fall back into old habits and there are legitimate reasons for this. My name is Luz Chacon. I'm a wellness coach and EFT, otherwise known as tapping practitioner. And I help women who struggle with stress and emotional eating to have a healthier relationship with food and with themselves so they can take back control of their choices. The, I want to talk today about three barriers that can get in the way of establishing or maintaining new habits. The first one is perfectionism. I like to say that I'm a recovering perfectionist and so I know what this looks like. If there's something that you're not really good at or not as good as you'd like to be, the fear of failure tends to kick in and you give up rather than continuing to work at getting better at that habit. Certain subconscious beliefs or limiting beliefs tend to go along with this all or nothing thinking. For example, I'm not good enough. I already got off track, so I might as well give up. Or maybe something like I've tried it before and it didn't work, so why try again? The second barrier is subconscious rebellion. This is often related to how we were parented or to the relationship we had with our, an authority figure when we were growing up. If you grew up with very strict rules, you might sabotage your new habits because you're, subconscious, uh, you're subconsciously rebelling against that internal authority figure or against rules. If the rules in your home were to lose, then you may struggle to set boundaries or to um, set limits with yourself because maybe you aren't used to having that discipline. The third barrier is stress. Stress can derail new habits because when you're feeling overwhelmed, you simply want to do the least possible in order to just get through your day. You want to put in as little effort as possible so you revert to old habits and patterns. Stress also makes it difficult for you to think clearly and rationally because it puts you in fight or flight mode in the prefrontal cortex which is our rational thinking, problem-solving brain, mostly goes offline. And um, so we're less likely to be able to do good problem-solving or make the best choices because we're operating more from our emotional brain, especially the amygdala, which is the brain's alert system. And it's also where emotional memory is stored. The amygdala is designed to protect us uh, from threats. So it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing that we need. But when stress is chronic, um, our body tends to get flooded with stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol too often. And so if that's what's going on, it's going to be really difficult to stick to changes. You're going to slip back into old habits. The good news is that EFT, emotional freedom techniques, or tapping, is a stress reduction modality that can put your body and your brain in relaxation mode because it literally brings down those cortisol levels. You can also um, you can use it in the moment when stress kicks in, and you can practice it regularly, especially when you're noticing those limiting beliefs come up, whether it's perfectionism or your inner rebel is, is acting up. If you're interested in learning more about tapping, if you'd like an individual session or you wanna do group tapping, I invite you to check out my website, saludyalegriawellness.com. Thanks for watching and as always, I wish you salud y alegría, health and joy.